we wanted to keep that kind of e emotion or very artistic part as a, as a part of the film itself. So that's what we, that's why we came back to, to the animation and we work in a specific way to give freedom to animators to, uh, express the, you know, the feeling of the characters, uh, just by their drawing and animation. Julian, how has the friendship between Ernest and Celestine evolved since like the first movie? Well, in the first movie, they actually meet, uh, Ernest finds uh, Celestine in a in a garbage can, <laughs> and he in, instead of eating her, he they become friends, um, and they are outcasts. Both of them are out, outcasts in their own um, communities, uh, but they happen to have learned to live together, and they're very complementary. And so, in this new adventure, actually. Uh, Celestine discovers a secret is that Ernest comes from a very remote country called Gibericia, and he actually flew away from this. He 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 flew from this country, and she really wants to know why, and she discovers why, and she she wants to help him, and uh, and and she wants to repair the violin, but also repair her friend. So. Um, this movie take those characters really deeper in their relationship to a point where they're almost um, separate from each other. So, so yeah, <laughs> we went deep. I love it. And then uh, Jean-Christophe, can you talk about exploring this new side of Ernest in this movie as we learn more about his past? Yes, the opportunity of this film is to go, as Julian said, deeper because... Uh, Ernest doesn't want to say, doesn't want to talk at all about his past. So it's just because Celestine loves Ernest that she cannot see, she cannot accept to see him sad. So she just to make the decision, the crazy decision to go by herself to Gibberussia to repair the violin. She's so sincere for, you know, in the friendship for a friend. She braves the tempest, uh, any any obstacle. So I think it's, she, it's a simple story. She is a very small character, but she so she shows a so huge humanity. So that's uh, what we love to to make you know simple stories, but uh, with characters uh, with great characters uh, uh, facing great obstacles with such a you know mind. I feel like this more like simple stories help get to the actual heart of the character. So I always love those. Um, and then Julian, you also directed the Star Wars Vision episode, Spy, uh, The Spy Dancer, which is also very tied into music. Uh, in both these projects, how does the music propel not just the plot, but the emotional core of the story forward? We like when music is not just um, there all the time, and it's just a, a tool to get you to tear up or or to 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 be amazed for us music is really central to the story because music is banned in this country so we had the opportunity there to play with the score and the music as a narrative tool so that you know music throughout the film throughout the steps where celestine can help Ernest liberate all the notes we have this music growing up and becoming uh, full again. And uh, so we worked with a very talented uh, composer, Vincent Courtois, uh, with whom we worked on, on, the, on the series as well for television. And he's so delicate and he really, he writes stories with his music. So for us, it's, uh, it was perfect. You really can understand the characters and their emotions and and it's complementary to the dialogues and the visuals. So it's, it was great. And then can you both talk to me a little bit about the animation style? Because I'm I'm a huge fan of the 2D hand drawn style. So this was like right up my alley. Just a word, uh, because Julien is a great animator. So but um we uh, the the television series was done in uh, CG, in fact, with a two D render, but we went back to two uh, D animation because 
there is something specific, like, uh, you know, when you see the drawing, as and Celestino Ernest, and drawn, moving with the voice, and there is a kind of emotion very, very specific to the drawing. And it's it doesn't really work when it's CG. So we wanted to keep that kind of e emotion or very artistic part as a, as a part of the film itself. So that's what we, that's why we came back to, to the animation and we work in a specific way to give freedom to animators to, uh, express the, you know, the feeling of the characters, uh, just by their drawing and animation. Yeah. We, we really think 2D, uh, survives time, uh, in a good way. And, uh, and, you know, a first film was 10 years ago, you can still watch it and it doesn't age. And so we want it. And it's also about this story. The story is about, you know, expressing yourself and being pure in pursuing your passion. And we're very passionate about drawing. And, and, and so we wanted the line work from our artists to be really on screen as they worked on. You know, it's it's not post processed or heavily rendered. It's you know directly the drawings from the animators that we see on screen, and and we like we we thought it was appropriate for them for the for the for the story. John Christophe, you worked with uh, Disney before. What did you learn from that that you brought into this project? Uh, yeah, it was a long time ago. Um, I I specifically work as an animator in Disney. And um, when I was in Disney, that's when I made the determination to become a director because I wanted to be involved in the story, to to inspire children. And uh, I had to go uh, further, uh, uh, being able to really uh, uh, stage the story and write the stories and really... Uh, bring to the children what I really wanted to give. So, um, yeah, the, the key moment, it was a key moment in my career in Disney because that's the place where I make the determination to make film for children. So I left and I started storyboard. I started many things and I had a lot of experience be before that film. And then can you both talk to me a little bit about the motto, that's how it is? Cause that was such a, kind of fascinating sticking point for me with this town what inspired that i think it's very universal because um as kids growing up and personally that was the case i was not meant to become an artist or a director uh never uh, because my parents my my father especially wanted me to become an engineer or pursue mathematics or something and I had to really fight against that to prove that, you know, I could enter a, a, an art school very secretly at first, and then proving every steps along the way that I could live from it. I could do things and, and, you know, answer questions in the interview at some point. <laughs> so yeah, that that's, that's all about it. It's about, you know, the only reason why I'm here, you know, uh, it's because I never gave up. I very much pursued uh, my passion, my, my, what my heart was telling. And, and that's exactly the message of the film. Uh, Jean-Christophe, this movie has some really big emotional beats, some very exciting chase scenes, and then great comedy and music. How do you balance those tones while keeping it consistent? Yes, that was the main uh, difficulty in the film. It was to, uh, to succeed. Uh, yeah. Wh what we said, we, so we, we started to work with Julien to draw a rough, uh, storyboard and animatic very soon, putting voices. And we started to work with Vincent Courtois, the composer very early. So we started to work with voices. Uh, at first it was a uh, home voice, but soon we recorded some, you know, actors. And we started to uh, to build the core of the film and to try to balance the story. So we created a lot of new s sequences that were not originally in the script. We changed some sequences with dialogue. Finally, the music tells the story instead of the dialogue. 
So we tried many things and we discussed a lot together with Julien. And we try to work on the, you know, that rhythm to balance moments of comedy, musical moments, emotional moments, to make it, you know, we wanted to keep the core of the story, but it 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 has to be enjoy enjoyful for the children and must not be boring. So we yeah, we worked a lot on the animatic, on the edit. Of the animatic to find that uh, that reason and that you know that uh, that balance. Well, you guys nailed it. It was very, very, very well done. Um, and then, do you, you guys have maybe an idea of what adventure you would like to see Ernest and Celestine on next? Because I just want to see them, their whole friendship. Oh yeah, they they are a powerful uh, duo. They are they could take on any adventure, and they're very appealing as a as a duo so yeah we think they could do whatever obstacle whatever adventure they they go next it will be you know um, a must see you know <laughs> we we think it would re- revolve around music again but let's see what did you find most surprising about working on this movie i think it was a great experience to co-direct the film because you, when you are a director, you you like to you know be the king and to the, 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 they said everything, and it was a great experience to work together, to be able to uh, you know listen to each other, finding the best way to do something, even if you you think in a way. And when we discuss, finally we find a new way to you know we try to improve our work by working together. So th- that was a great experience. And also, uh, we really were uh, happy and also surprised by the kids' reaction by looking at the film. Sometimes they are so happy. Sometimes they cry during the film, but at the end they dance, they are so happy. So it's like um, a mirror. If you really respect the children and you try to give uh, your best, it's just, you. it's amazing. Uh, the also what they gave us what their their reaction so it it was a yeah it was an amazing uh, experience for me and for us well i love that thank you guys so much for talking to me like i said this movie is phenomenal it's so gorgeous and i can't wait for more people to see it thank, thank you so much